Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 897. Um, the, topic today, <laughs> the topic today is why it's so important to learn from your past relationships. And I'll give you more information about that and what it means and why you need to do this um, shortly. But before I do that, let me introduce myself and explain what this is all about in case you haven't seen my talks before. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. Um, you probably see my name somewhere in this video. I am an inspirational speaker, special, excuse me, inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, I say inspirational speaker, clear voiced <coughs> inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. I highly recommend it, I'm very biased. Um, I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. Hi, Karenina, nice to see you. Um, I'm also a, I also help women create balance in love, life and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also what I started these talks almost three years ago. These are called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart is the full title, even though they're abbreviated in the heading. <clears throat> There's more coming about that later on. I'm not going to talk about it yet because it's my little secret. So almost three years ago now, so it's been three years worth of talks and most of them have been daily. For the last two and a half years, they've been daily talks, which is why episode number 897, three more days to 900. Mm. Anyway, the topic today is about um, why you must learn from your past relationships. Now, if you've never seen my talks before, this is going to be maybe brand new information for you. Perhaps. Maybe you read it in books somewhere. If you've watched my broadcast for at least 100 days, let's say 100 broadcasts, I've tapped into some of this stuff before, but I want to speak to it more directly, more bluntly, and more effectively so you can use it in your life right now. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? <laughs> so let's dive in. Um, the reason why I say it's important for you to, it's so important to learn from your past relationships is because several things can be of relevance here. Now, first of all, let me qualify this because, what you know? I'm, well, <laughs> let me say it this way. There are generally two types of, kind of two types of relationships. Relationships are really amazing, wonderful, and leave you in a great sense of joy, even though they have ended. And relationships that really like, well, they're not, we're not that. Either they were dull, plain, or they just simply were painful. So in, in, in either one of those cases, or all three of those cases, if you look at the medium one, there's something to learn from them. Because if you had an amazing relationship, which is the first time maybe you had one after several bad ones, what did you do right? What did you do that actually helped you get where you want to go? And if this relationship ended, why did it end? Was there something that you did or didn't do, or they did or didn't do, that caused you to drift apart and you didn't stay together, even though it was so amazing? See, there's lessons to learn all the way through. Now, on the inverse, or the flip side of that, if you've been in a traumatic relationship, a painful one, one that was painful, ended badly, maybe you were dating a narcissist, or you were gaslit, or some other trendy term from the, the DSM-5, or six, six, excuse me. Um, you know what the DSM-5 is, you know what it is, you know what I mean. There are certain key terms in psychology about different paradigms. So you may have in a relationship with a clinical psych um, narcissist, not just somebody that takes selfies all the time, very different. Or you may have been in a relationship that sucked because they didn't participate fully, or you didn't feel loved enough, or you didn't feel like you could, you could participate. Maybe they dominated the whole thing. Any one of those things could be things that don't work for you. Whatever it was, here's the twist by the way, if you don't want to repeat it, you need to learn what you did or didn't do that created that. Now, it sounds pretty simple to say that, but so many people don't. They'll break off one relationship, and within two weeks, they're on the dating app, swiping left, swiping right, whatever. I think swiping right. I don't do the swiping apps, so I forget. Um, swiping right to find the next date without doing any healing or inner work or, or, or learning between the last breakup and this new relationship. So even though it sounds like common sense, it ain't very commonly done. So my intention with this is to remind those of you who are watching and anybody you want to share this with who maybe keeps doing this thing when they keep dating and in relationship. I know some people personally where they spend maybe three seconds between relationships. Like they're in a relationship. I don't see it for a couple of months. They're in a new relationship. And basically it was like a one day gap between relationships. And I know they're not learning from them. They just don't want to be single, which is a whole other talk I've done before. Being happy being single is part of being in a healthy relationship. That's clear. Yes, that's the truth. So... Let me give you some, a, a, a for instance. I'll speak from my own experience, let me, let me be transparent. <laughs> I've shared before that I was in three different relationships that were basically the same paradigm, 
where I was out of alignment. I wasn't in my masculine. My partner was more masculine. And she was more masculine than I was. And I was ended up being more of a beta male or even feminine in my relationships. I didn't learn that till the third relationship. I repeated the pattern three different times with three different women. You think if I'd learned the first time, I would have saved myself the trouble the second two times? It took me after the third relationship, because I was a bit of a thick skull, <laughs> thick skull, to go, hang on a second. What am I doing that's creating this result? Because it was three times in a row, I must be picking some doozies, or it's something about me that's causing it to be a problematic situation. And that's what drove me into the work I've been doing for the last 12 years, 13 years, which is what I do in teaching my coaching because of what I learned powerfully about the masculine feminine polarity, as I've shared many times before. That's what drives my work, and that's why these talks are called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Masculine feminine polarity. It's in the title. <laughs> but the thing was, I didn't learn the first two times. Now, I'm sure, possibly, that if you're like me, and most people tend to, tend to be somewhat like me, not necessarily my accent or personality, but you have the same tendency, you say, same pattern tendency. You've probably been through relationships where you notice the same thing happened a few times before you won't, whoa, whoa, hang on a second. I don't do that anymore. How do I change it? See, this is the thing I recommend you do after every relationship, especially if they're not going great. Because if you're going through relationships where each one ends painfully, or I should say each relationship is painful and then it ends, either one, there's a lesson to be learned. Not saying you've got to pay a price for it, but the lesson meaning, how can I learn from this so I don't do it again? Now, it sounds so simple, again, but it's so ignored. Learning to really get clear about what you didn't do the way you wanted to, or you did do the wrong way, or they did or they didn't do, whatever it was, whatever combination of things it was that end up the relationship sucking, so to speak, there's an absolute clear indication that you have the opportunity, you have the opportunity to make sure that doesn't happen again. And it's not about them, it's about you because you're free now, you're available now. And, and again, as I said before, having time between relationships re allows you to have the space to do the healing work. This is a large part of the work I do with my clients. Yes, I help my clients a vision of what they want to create and attract and build out the future of their relationship they want to have, which is great. And part of that is to make sure that doesn't, the past doesn't get repeated. People talk about, you know, just, just bury it, keep moving on, ignore it and move on. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to be blunt about this. If you don't, this is, this is actually quoting uh, Jules Santayana, is a quote I've used before in many of my, my videos and stuff. If you don't learn from the past, you're doomed to repeat it. Actually, the, the, his quote is, if you don't learn from the history, you're doomed to repeat it. Same thing. If you don't learn what you didn't like about your past relationship, you don't learn what you did to participate, contribute, make it happen that way, and you don't want that again, if you don't learn what you did or didn't do, you can repeat it. And if you think that won't happen, to quote somebody else who's attributed to be Albert Einstein, you're basically dealing with insanity, which is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. If you keep going to relationship after relationship after relationship without doing the inner work in between, you're going to kind of, you're going to kind of end up repeating yourself. The person may change, the face may change, the sex may change, the whole relationship may change, but internally, the same stuff's going to show up for you. In those three relationships I mentioned, with those three women, they were all dramatically different women, visually, physically, energetically, all very different, except for the fact that they, all three of them, that I wasn't aware of, were leading from their masculine. Now, they didn't know that, I didn't know that at the time, but they were running the show, dominating the conversation, but they were actually owning the masculine. And the funny thing was, in all three cases, for two of the cases, that would be accurate, it was almost like they had to for the way they were living. The third one was a different one, sort of, kind of. But the reality was that they were choosing that and I embraced that as part of my choice because I didn't know that I could stand in my masculine relationship. It actually was the reason why we didn't last that long, ultimately. They ended on painful doubts because they wanted me to step up and I didn't know how to because the fact is they taken up their role. It's like, um, you can have it. I had no idea. Totally clueless. But of course, it took me to learn this stuff in the last 12 years where I know now so differently. I'm not saying you should take 12 years in between relationships. I chose that. Different. Because for part of the journey for me in this work, and just this, to express why I've been single this long, or as long as I have, is because when I went through the transformation experience of learning about the masculine and feminine polarity in great depth, embracing embodiment and transformation, I learned that one of my core values I was not doing was living my purpose. I was just doing jobs. I've had eight careers before this, by the way, just a sidebar. 
um, all of which were fine, all of which were okay, but none of them were my calling. <clears throat> and at this point in my life, doing what I do now, I'm so clear that I'm in the right place because I had a value, I love, I get juiced up by what I do. I love transforming people's lives. It fulfills my purpose. And that key piece alone enables me to stay in my masculine easily. And it also means that a relationship has to be additive to that. If it pulls away from that or if it doesn't add to it, I'm not interested. I'm willing to be single rather than be in a relationship if it doesn't add to my life in, in addition to my purpose work. That's, and I've said it publicly here. I've actually said it a few times. But just to be clear, once again, that's my truth. That may not be your truth, that's just mine. But I want to say this one more time to get it clear for you. If you are going from relationship to relationship to relationship with nothing in between, no transformation, no support, no reflection, no journaling, no coaching, it ain't going to change well, much. And so there are people out there who I know this, like I've seen, their friends of mine do this, where they basically, they break up and a couple weeks later, they're swiping right to meet somebody else. And they're wondering why they end up in the same place every time. If this is true for you, get support. Reach out to me, get support, seriously, because you don't have to keep repeating yourself in pain, suffering, and losing out. I guess I'm getting kind of pedantic about this. <laughs> this is really fundamental. It's simple as it sounds. It's one of the three um, legs of my work with my clients. And to give you the shorthand version, if you go to my website, you can sign in for the, the Three Keys videos that teach you this stuff. But this is one of them, which is really getting clear about what it is you are not doing for yourself, which is why you end up repeating the same experience in relationships. Now, there's a deeper cut of this, which I'll talk about briefly here, which I've talked about before, which is if you don't deal with your upbringing as well, that's going to infuse, influence, and infect all of your relationships, sorry to say. So if you had a challenging childhood, it ain't getting any better in your relationships until you do the work to clear that out. That's the baggage we all drag around in our relationships, and I, I've talked about that before myself. I, I healed that one a few decades ago. But if you haven't, it's going to keep showing up in your relationships. Whatever patterns you picked up from your family dynamics when you were a kid will tend to repeat themselves in your adult relationships, and that is painful truth. Sorry. No, I'm not sorry. It's what we do as human people. Human beings, people. Yeah, that. Um, when you learn how to change that, transform your history, shift your paradigm of your upbringing, it changes all your adult relationships. That's part of the work I do, as I mentioned. So I'll put some links in the comments so you can check out my stuff, my stuff, my offerings and the coaching opportunity, or at least the conversation first, to see if you want to coach with me. I'm not saying you have to, and I'm not saying I want to, <laughs> just to be clear. But I'm also going to put a link, some other links in the comments that might help you support you as well. And one of those is because uh, as we head towards the holidays, this is a time, I've talked about this before, I've actually postponed this to next, next Friday because of this. Um, I'm offering a new, new course called Thriving Through the Holidays. It's a group program. I'm starting next Friday because that's 11.22, great numbers. And it's right before Thanksgiving because it's very pedantic, very important that time is hitting. Because for many of us, going for Thanksgiving is bringing up all of our stuff from our history, at least in America. Canada's already done theirs and England doesn't, England doesn't have one for three countries in particular. So I'll put that link in the comments for you to check it out as well. I'd love you to join me. It's a group program. It's a much more financially accessible place to work together and it's also a group support system that you'll love. So that'll be in the comments as well. Again, this is one of three spokes I talk about and I'll put the link in the comments to my website which is the front page of my website so you can sign up there to get the three links, three keys, what it is you need to transform for your amazing relationship to work. This is one of the three. So you can watch the other two as well. <laughs> So having said all that, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, I made my point, I think pretty adamantly. If you didn't get this, you don't understand it, message me and I'll tell you more clearly. Um, if you want help, reach out to me. Again, I'll put some links in the comments. You can reach out to me through social media. Um, this is key to having healthy, amazing relationships. But you've got to do the work to get there. That's just the lesson I learned. And I know we can all learn it. No, I'm not going to go there. Okay, so again, links will be in the comments. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day again at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. If you haven't seen me live, you can join me live anytime you want, and you can join in the comments, comment, respond, interact. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, you can watch it there, and you can watch my replays in either on Facebook or on YouTube. And on Facebook, the, um, oh, what's the word? The location is my business page, which is barryselby.author. You can like my page and you can watch them all there. Actually, you can't watch them all there because Facebook doesn't save them all there. Another conversation. 
However, I do have one on YouTube for backup. So on my YouTube channel, which I invite you to subscribe to, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, please subscribe. There's a playlist in there called Messages from the Masculine. Surprise, surprise. And in there are all of the broadcasts from newest to oldest. You can scan through, search for keywords, find the titles that stand out for you and get all the help you need there for free. But seriously, if you want to get the work done, you want to transform your relationship experience, reach out to me, get support, get the help you need so you can have what you want. I thank you once again for watching. I appreciate you being with me. If you want to share it with anybody else, feel free to do so. Hopefully it will trigger them to get some help. Um, in a good way, that is. And uh, that's about it. I appreciate you being with me. I'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same channel. I may, be on, I may be out and about tomorrow, but I'll do a video anyway at 5 p.m. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Um, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.